For a long while now, we've been on the hunt for solutions, if you like, that help us intensify those processes and especially reduce energy. That was the voice of the chief engineer at Seven Trent, a utility in the UK that is facing the wastewater challenge. How do you do more at your wastewater treatment facilities for less? And a very warm welcome from me. I'm joined by Tom Freyberg, who's been investigating. Tom, we're about to hear about a DuPont project uh, not far from Birmingham in the middle of England. It's been called a breakthrough by some. Is that the case? Well, thanks, Andrew. I think when a lot of new solutions or innovations hit the water market, they do claim to be the next biggest thing or the next biggest breakthrough. So it's interesting to go back and look at actually which part of this solution is potentially a breakthrough. So to find out more, I'm joined by Bob Steer from Seven Trent and Wayne Byrne from Oxymem, recently acquired by DuPont. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Hello. So I really want to start by hearing from Bob on the scale of the operation and the challenges the utility is facing on a day-to-day -day basis. We have the happy task of treating about 2 billion litres of sewage every day and um, we've actually got more than a thousand sewage treatment works and so you can imagine at any one investment period we're not going to be changing all of those so as new environmental uh, requirements come along or if population grows in a certain area of course we have to do work to those assets and you know Frankly, it's brilliant if we can find technologies that we can retrofit into the existing civil engineering structures to make that more efficient for our customers. Give us sort of in a, in a nutshell, if you will, how, how the MABR really compares to conventional approaches to get that energy saving. The proposition that, that MABR delivers is that effectively we're using a membrane um, to deliver the oxygen directly to a fixed film um, uh, or fixed biofilm. So the, the biology actually grows on the fibre and basically the, the gas is transferred across the wall of the fibre directly uh, to the biology that's consuming the pollutants. So you get this really, really efficient um, uh, exchange of, of oxygen from, from an energy perspective and you also manage to concentrate um, the, the process. So you can do an awful lot more treatment per cubic metre um, deployed than conventional uh, uh, activated sludge tanks. Now, Pete, uh, you've uh, overseen, if you like, the installation of the MABR into Spurnal. Uh, what is it you're doing there? The Resource Recovery Innovation Centre at Spurnal um, is our test bed to, to demonstrate the technologies that we need to transition to a much more circular way um, of uh, running our treatment plants. Um, so it's a fantastic um, facility um, that allows us yeah, to look at things like low energy treatment processes and processes that, that can recover material from wastewater. So really preparing for resource reclamation and the, uh, the circular economy. Uh, let's now speak with John McConomy, who uh, was responsible for delivering the Oximem solution. Uh, John, what was it that impressed the Seven Trent team especially? Oxmem offer a means of process intensification for a wastewater treatment plant. It's a solution that's easily deployed on site in a matter of days and has a very extremely low energy consumption. And it was installed at Spurnal in July of 2020. How did that go amongst all the lockdown challenges? Actually for us it was um, very simple, extremely simple. We had deployed core product to the guys at Seven Trent, and when the time was right, they had a competent contractor on site who just uh, with us sharing some basic information and some manuals, these guys were able to deploy within two days. They dropped the modules in in two days. In fact, Oxymem engineers were not actually on site for the deployment. And Justin, you project managed that installation. What was key? I think it's really crucial to, to highlight the ease of working um, with uh, Oximum and Mott McDonald Bentley to install this without having to have Oximum on site, but rather give us what they need and how they need it installed, our contractor installing it. That really proved to be a smooth installation of the MABR. Steve, you're in charge of operations um, how has the Oxymem MABR been performing? 
We've seen around about 9% ammonia removal in an uptick pocket. Um, what we're able to do here at Spurnal as well is compare to another activated sludge lane without an MOVR in it as a control. Um, and we're seeing obviously uh, no removal in the control lanes as we'd expect. And about 9% about ish we've had um, in the first few months of installation of the MOVR. Thank you, Andrew. I'd, I'd still like to hear from Bob um, because it's been a, a flagship reference of both Seven Trent and Oxymem, but what about the future of the technology when it comes to the rest of your assets that you mentioned earlier? Um, so for us, MABR is a bit about putting extra capacity because we can use the civil assets of some of these sites again and again and just put extra M&E kit in, brilliant. And it's a bit about improving efficiency because we've still got some sites out there where we're still blowing that air through the bottom of these tanks and blowing it out the top. So that's where we see MABR coming in for us. Thank you, Bob. Interesting to see about the continued goals to you know, increase uh, efficiency across the other assets. But Wayne, presumably this is not just a start for MABR, right? We think the future is very, very bright for, for MABR and we see it as being a, a pervasive tool in uh, the expansion of plant demands over the course of the next 15, 20 years. So there you have it, Andrew, a, a tale of co-innovation that will perhaps be seen as a landmark in the commercialization journey of MABR history. And if you take a step back, you know, UK utilities are under increasing pressure at the moment, particularly when it comes to wastewater treatment, as well as combined sewer overflow infrastructure. So these stories of successful implementation are going to be important as a reference point moving forward to see how a technology can go from the university to a pilot to a full-scale implementation. Tom, thanks a lot for that report. Uh, the UK's largest MABR plant. And thanks as well for your interest. If you want to learn more about Oximem MABR, please visit our website at DuPont Water Solutions. We look forward to hearing from you.